you let your aerobics class out so early? My slim down, shape up class turned out to be a sit down, give up class. <laughs> and we were just getting rolling. I lost the whole crowd when the good humor truck came by. <laughs> Of course, the good news is I have never seen those ladies move so fast. <laughs> By the way, you never finished telling me what happened last night. You were supposed to be home at 10. Dad's still furious at you. Well, Michael and I got out of the movie on time, but when we got to his car, he couldn't find his car keys. And I had the hardest time remembering where I'd hid them. <laughs> We had the nicest time looking. <laughs> Hello? Oh, Karen! Hey! Kate! Oh, Allison! Uh, Kate. Allison. <laughs> the foster twin. <laughs> Vicky's aunt. <laughs> oh, what a surprise. We haven't seen you since you moved to Chicago. Yeah, Vicky wrote us and said you went to England this summer covering Wimbledon. I sure did. Vicky sends her regards and said if I had any extra time, I should stop by see you and maybe use the gym. Great. Why don't you just go in there and change and then we can show you around. Thanks. Ah, mm. oh, I like her. Why is this thing sitting here? How do you expect people to lounge in the lounge? Relax, Dad. We're just taking a break. And it's over right now. <laughs> you might have more energy during the day, Kate, if you got home earlier at night. I was only a few minutes past curfew. Eighty-three minutes is not a few. <laughs> Three minutes in the course of a lifetime. How would you like to live a lifetime? <laughs> Dad, you're right. I'm sorry. I promise. I'll be home tonight at 10. You're darn right you will, because you'll also be home at 9, and at 8, and at 7, and at 6, and at 5. Because this is Sunday, and we are going to have a nice, warm, loving family dinner together, whether you like it or not. Now get back to work. Oh, what a grouch. Dad's got too much free time, and it's getting me into trouble. <laughs> you know what he needs? A hobby? A social life. Why should he have one? I don't. <laughs> I'm talking about an occasional date. So am I. <laughs> now, Allison, I'm serious. Dad needs to go out with somebody. Maybe once a month or every two months. Well, he's got Beth. They do stuff together. No, no, no. Beth is his buddy. I mean, she's Mom's best friend. <laughs> they go bowling together. And he's home by 9.30, so we can count the minutes till I get back. <laughs> this is my favorite part of the day, Beth. That's nice, Art. Lunchtime. Mmm. <laughs> 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 Bet you can't eat just one. <laughs> mm. I feel guilty for being so happy. <sighs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Sometimes I feel like I just saw Molly last week. She's the one who got me hooked on these chips. Me too. Molly taught me how to put them on my tongue and squash them up against the roof of my mouth. You know, you'd be my best friend, even if you weren't my best friend by default. Oh, go on. Yeah. This time, let's try to stop after one bag. Why? Because you're coming over for dinner tonight. Oh, yeah? What's the occasion? Us. I'm going to tell the girls about us. Art, are you sure this is the right time? When we started seeing each other, we said we'd tell them when we thought we were sure. Well, we're sure. Aren't we? Sure. I love you. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. I love you, too. But the girls only think of me as their mother's best friend. And since she died, is your best friend. Exactly. That's why the dinner tonight. They're going to accept you and love you like I do. Mm, I'm nervous. What do you really think they're going to say? Same thing they always say. My lasagna's overcooked, my peas are undercooked, and why can't we have wine, too? <laughs> How about Miss Lemsky, my world history teacher? She's not bad-looking, and she's single. 
Get out of here. Teachers don't date. <laughs> Well, how about Carol Bidwell? You know, our dentist. You want our father to go out with someone who makes our gums bleed? <laughs> well, okay, there's got to be someone for Dad. Well, we better find someone soon. I'd like to break curfew tomorrow night, too. <laughs> this gym is great. I just lost three pounds trying to open my locker. <laughs> now... I promised Vicky I'd get all the dirt on you guys, so why don't I take you out for a nice dinner tonight? Oh, I'd love to. Good. But some of us are grounded. Oh, can't you get off for one night? Nah, you don't know our dad. Hmm. You don't know our dad. <laughs> yeah. leather. That's right. You're very good at identifying men's aftershaves. Why are you so good at identifying men's aftershaves? My men were that, but they were nothing at all. Go to your room. Kate, I still think we should tell Dad about Karen coming over. And have him chicken out at the last minute? No way. He'll find out soon enough. I'll get it. Coat. Beth! Cut stuff coming through. Why is she here? What do you mean, why is she here? She has to be here. I told you, we're having a special dinner. Hey, 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 hey. What are you doing? Why are you setting another place? Uh, well, um, because, uh... Oh, we've got another surprise dinner guest. My friend Vicky's Aunt Karen Peterson from Chicago. She's using our gym while she's in town. Your daughters are terrific. Oh, and it was so nice of you to have me over for dinner. Oh, well, hey, I'm a nice guy. <laughs> Will you two sit down? Get to know each other. <coughs> I'll get the wine. I'll get the ice cubes. I'll get the glasses. Uh, they're on the table. Uh, oh. Boy, your girls sure have grown up since the last time I saw them. Yeah, they used to be little. <laughs> now they're big. <laughs> so, how is Chicago? Fine. Still have Lake Michigan? <laughs> last time I checked. <laughs> how is the wine coming? Karen Peterson. She's a reporter from Chicago. Karen, this is Beth. She's an old friend of the family. An old, old friend of the family. Old. Art, may I see you in the kitchen, please? Sure. Who is she? What is she doing here? I don't know. The girls brought her home. What do you want me to do? Throw her out? Yes. <laughs> Come on, Beth, I don't want to make a scene. As soon as she leaves, then we'll make our announcement. Okay, sweetheart? She sure is dressed nice. Yeah, she is. No, she's not. <laughs> oh, it's so Karen have a sparkling sense of humor, Daddy. Very shiny. <laughs> when are you going back to Chicago, Karen? Tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> but I'll be back in a few weeks, and then I'm going to stay for a month. Uh-huh. <laughs> Dad, Karen is the biggest football freak. Dad used to play for Iowa. The Hawkeyes. You guys won the Rose Bowl in 59. Now, who was it you beat? California. Yeah, we did. 38 to 15. 38-12. <laughs> I have a good memory. I was there. Section 4, row 59. Didn't you see me? <laughs> No, unfortunately, there was about 11 Cal guys on top of me most of the time. <laughs> well, that's all I got to say about that. I think it's so neat that Karen knows so much about football. Well, Beth is a big hockey fan. Mm, I hate hockey. 
Baseball's really my passion. I grew up under the shadow of Wrigley Field. Oh, the great players those Cubs used to have. Dee Fondy. Billy Williams. Right. Do you know he played in over 1,000 consecutive games? What a guy. <laughs> yeah, Garvey just broke that record. Did he? You know what? <laughs> uh, pass the piece, please. <laughs> Let's talk about something else, okay? Well, Karen can talk about anything. She's very multifaceted. And she knows how to play the clarinet. Art kitchen. Excuse us. <laughs> kitchen. You and Dad are great together. Um, I don't think so. You know, I'd love to catch up with you girls, but some other time. I don't want to be the cause of a lover's quarrel. Lovers? Them? Right. I'm so sure. <laughs> well, I am. I think I'd better be going. But oh, Karen... Oh, thank your father for me. Oh, and uh, tell Beth I really don't hate hockey that much. I'll see you next trip. They think she is your perfect match. Selling me may be a little rough. Beth, sweetheart, you are second to no one. I'm sorry about all this. Come on, we're going to go out there and make our announcement right now. In front of Wonder Woman? <laughs> I don't care. I want the whole world to know. Come on. I think you should leave the knife here. <laughs> Do I have to? All right. <laughs> Where is our dinner guest? She left. Good. It was our surprise. Well, we have a surprise. And you guys, <laughs> you guys are really going to love this. Beth and I are in love and we want to get married. What? <laughs> well, look, I know it's a shock and it's all happening pretty quick, but you see, we wanted to be sure before we sprung something this big on you. Wow, I can't believe it. You and Beth? I know. Isn't it terrific? Don't you just hate it when people eat and run? That. Well, there ought to be, in the Constitution or something. <laughs> oh, Dad made us look like jerks. He didn't even trust us enough to clue us in. He said he wanted to make sure first before he told us. Kate, don't you think that maybe Dad's lonely? How could he be lonely? He's got us. <laughs> maybe we're not enough. Dad wouldn't get married again unless he stopped loving Mom. What are you doing? I'm getting out of here. Where are you going? Um, Chicago. Chicago? Tonight? Eventually, Chicago. Tonight, I'm going to Linda's. <laughs> Kate, we're in this together. Don't go. Come with me. We have matching luggage. <laughs> I don't understand what the big deal is. A lot of our friends have stepmothers or fathers. The subject is closed. I have nothing further to say. Where are all my clothes going? <laughs> what if Dad and Beth have a kid? What if they did? What if Dad and Beth have twins? The odds are against it. Dad's done it before. Man's <laughs> a Xerox machine. <laughs> There's a very unhappy lady in the living room, and I'm not too thrilled either. Are you going somewhere? Why would you care? I'm going to Linda's. I can't handle this. Well, will you give me a minute to explain first? Of course she will. <laughs> Look, this thing with Beth and me, well, our friendship has blossomed. 
It's changed from one thing into another, like a tadpole grows into a frog. No, not that. <laughs> More like a caterpillar changes into a beautiful butterfly, or a bear emerges from hibernation. You know what I mean? No. <laughs> Why don't you let the bear sleep a little longer? Because the bear is getting older, and he finally got up enough courage to tell Beth how he feels, and I'll be darned if she doesn't feel the same way. I don't understand this. Am I bringing in a stranger? You've known Beth all your lives. She loves you, and I love you. You did love us, but now you love Beth. Beth isn't going to replace anyone. I want her to be my wife, and hopefully our friend. Don't you think that's possible? Dad, it's not that we're against you getting married again. But it's so soon. It'll be fine with us. In two, three, eight years. <laughs> oh, that's very big of you, but I love Beth now. Well, I guess there's no point in talking to us about it. I'm not asking your permission to marry Beth. Well, let me ask you something. Were you and Beth doing it while Mom was still alive? Kate. Oh, sure, like it never crossed your mind. Kate? What? Keep packing. Let me take a wild guess. They don't want to be bridesmaids. <laughs> Almost hit Kate. I don't even want to know what she said. This is ridiculous. She's in there packing. She's so darn stubborn. Just like her father. Well, this time she went one step too far. I'm going to ground her. I'm always grounding her. She never even saw the month of October. Art, I really think that we should cool it for a while. Tell Kate that she can stay. I'm leaving. Oh, no, Beth, wait, please. You've got to straighten things out with them before we can go on with our lives. Well, maybe if the four of us got together and we talked... Oh, we... no. If I say anything to them right now, I will only regret it. How could three women love me so much and make me so miserable? Kate, don't go. No, you don't have to go. Beth went. You won. I hope you're happy. Thank you for being so understanding. Thank you for being so compassionate. Thank you for not being triplets. <laughs> what the hell? I might as well take a shot at regretting it. I'm leaving. You're not leaving. I'm not leaving. Art, you're leaving. Oh. I'm leaving? I'm leaving. Take a walk around the block. Take a walk around the city. Okay, look. I know that you don't want me here, but I'm not budging until I've spoken my piece. I'm not really interested. Kate, listen to what she's got to say. Why? Can't you wait? We'll be in college soon, we'll be out of the house, and then you can have Dad all to yourself. You know something? You act like your father and I fell in love just to spite you. Like our love is some sort of cross that you have to bear. Well, get over it. I am damned lucky to have him, and I am not sabotaging our chance of happiness because of you two spoiled brats. Brats? Yeah. I'm not a brat. Sometimes she's a brat, but I'm never a brat. <laughs> Don't you think that your father has earned a little time for himself? Time for you, you mean. Time to be loved. Isn't there room for all of us? Four's a crowd. Oh, yeah? Well, one of us is leaving. I hate you. I hate you, too. Is everything okay? <laughs> Good. <laughs> I miss Mom. I miss her, too. So do I. I miss her a lot. So does your dad. Okay, look. After she died, all your father and I talked about was your mother. Then there was a period where we talked about everything but her. 
Lately, we've had the best of both. We love her, and we love each other. I, I think she'd get a kick out of us being together. I really think she would. I can just hear her. I don't think any mother ever doted on her daughters like Molly Foster. You know, sometimes I would come over here. You couldn't have been more than, I don't know, two. And you were taking your naps. And I'd figure, perfect, they're asleep. Molly and I can sit around and eat their graham crackers. <laughs> but you know what she would do? What? She'd wait about an hour and then make noise. Why did she do that? She wanted to wake you up so she could play with you. She was so funny. You know, the only way that she could tell you apart when you were first born was by your hair. Her hair? Yeah, only one of you had any. <laughs> Which one of us was bald? Allison. <laughs> Figures. <laughs> You said you hated me. You said it first. I was jealous. Jealous? Of what? Of both of you. Of the special relationship you have with your father. I mean, I could live with him for the next 50 years and it would be wonderful, but... It'll never be what the three of you have together. Look. We don't have to go into this marriage business loving each other. But it would be great if we could leave that door open for the future. Can we? Okay. This is the story. I'm the head of this household. <laughs> and I'm going to lay down the law. And I want the law obeyed. Now, you are going to make up you are going to get along, and you are going to love each other. Is that clear? <laughs> it is? You mean we're all going to be one big happy family? I'll try. I'll try. I'll get back to you in the morning. <laughs> former First Lady Rosalind Carter reveals the inner secrets of life in the White House on Woman to Woman. Then join Sally Jesse Raphael and Dr. Jerry Falwell. Woman to Woman at 9, Sally Jesse Raphael at 10, here on Channel 11.